I mean, this this doesn't even solar power not, that great, but it, it does all right. That's a really tiny one, dude. I got the one in, like, because he crashed all the time. I like, crash your bike all the time. And I'm sitting in this mud puddle waiting for him to show up, and my foot slipped, and I laid it on this crash bars on the side, and he, he drives past me, and he goes, oh, 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 Bleeding everywhere, like uh, bleeding. I seen this guy, a 300 pound guy off that KLR, two turn calls off of that bike on a turn road in my rear view mirror. <laughs> I walked up to him, I go, dude, you okay? All right, here we are, stopped in Grangeville for our last snack uh, before we go down the hill and then uh, through Whitebird up over the top and then drop down into uh, Pittsburgh Landing for our hike. All right, talk to you guys later. Up from White Bird, and we're gonna drop wow. down into the canyon. Lots of snow up here. Whoa. Got Steven and Steven and Michael with us today. Hey, look, you, there's no snow in the in the canyon. <laughs> I know, right down there by the river, there's none. Looks like it's gonna be a good hike. Great place to hike down here this time of year. I guess I should uh, pan a little slower. Is what they say. Your eyeballs can actually see everything. Can't ask for a better day, for better views. Just amazing. All right, here we are. Kirkwood Ranch Trailhead. Everybody's getting ready, getting their stuff packed up. And uh, we're gonna take off. All that snow we had up there that I took pictures and videotaped earlier, and this is uh, what we got down in the canyon. Not a lot at all. So, should be pretty decent. Should probably hit a little bit of snow on our hike in, uh, but we'll see. And then we're supposed to get snow tonight, and then rain and snow tomorrow. So, we'll see how it goes. Oh, damn it. Covered in snow, at the river, the greens. God, it's gorgeous out here. So good to be out.
what we usually do is uh, stay at uh, Pittsburgh Landing and do uh, some trailhead camping, have a fire and maybe some steaks or a bratwurst. But this time, because we wanted to do a, a lot more exploring up around the lodge, as we decided to leave a little earlier than normal and uh, get up here into the Kirkwood Ranch, not Lodge, Kirkwood Ranch on today, on Friday. And so the weather's amazing, sunny, trail's good, definitely like rocks, rocky crags, stuff like that. Just a beautiful canyon hike. Get the river on one side. And anyway, so we're gonna get into Kirkwood today. Maybe do a little exploring, get camp set up. And then there's just a bunch of stuff to see, like uh, some uh, um, pictographs, um, some old mines. There's the old Moonshine Mansion. And just, of course, all the cool stuff just at the Kirkwood Ranch itself. Man, that's some serious debris. You can see that on the trail. Suck if that fell off while I was hiking. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here we are. Going along the Kirkwood. Uh, got my pack pretty dialed in. I decided not to wear my wear thermals that I'd usually have underneath my my shirt and my pants. Uh, I feel like that'd just be too much warmth. It's supposed to actually warm up uh, tonight. It's supposed to get cloud cover and snow. And then tomorrow we'll get uh, snow rain mixed. So I got my rain gear, got all that dialed in. And yeah, let's enjoy this thing. up here a little ways and uh, breaks off into the old orchard for the ranch one of the couple different orchards they had you can see the old apple trees uh, some pretty nice just varying little areas of rocks sandbars and fun stuff along the river a lot of times you'll see jet boats going up and down here on the jet boat tours can look up a guy called Kilgore, runs a jet boat. Follow him on Instagram. He always got some great shots of fishing and stuff like that up along here. So I want to check him out. Just look up Kilgore on Instagram. All right, well, let's keep on hitting this trail. We got like six miles into Kirkwood Ranch, so it's a pretty easy hike. It's usually about two hours. If you're just going at a good pace. Not a lot of real ups and downs, elevation change. There's a couple little climbs. Up out of here. <laughs>
views are just amazing. <clears throat> I just love the contrast of the snow and the everything. It's just glorious. The sun. It's beautiful. Yep. Well, uh, I think we're, I don't know, a third of the way there. So I got quite a bit to go. <clears throat> I just did the that real climb back there. It's not very much. Pretty steep, really quick. But you get it done and you're over it. And now it's just kind of meandering along the canyon wall. Go up a little bit up there, a little ways, and then skirt along there until you get around the bend and then you'll see Kirkwood. <sighs> but I mean, just look at all this. It's just ridiculous. It's a beautiful hike. <clears throat> Should join us sometime. Oh man, oh, some good climbing. This is a beautiful trail. I love coming out here. It's cold sometimes, especially overnight in the canyons. But, I mean, the views are magnificent. Just gorgeous. Just wait till you see the lodge. They have people come out here. I volunteer to stay for uh, 30 days and it's a 12 volt system it's run off a water mill and of course they get a ride up here on the jet boat with their month worth of supplies and stuff like that uh, definitely be something fun to look into and do later when you have some vacation time or just 30 days where you just want to get out of the hustle and the bustle and uh, sign up for a winter jaunt. You know, it might be cold. Just give your blankets and all that stuff. And they bring you supplies and they hook you up pretty good. It's plenty of time to read books and just enjoy the solitude of it. So you're not just always tied into social media as much as we love it. Especially when we can't get out here, you know. It's one thing for me. I mean, I love YouTube videos. One of the reasons why I'm starting this one, I mean, uh, probably won't be that good, but you know, I'll try and of course, you know, you begin somewhere and then you just get better. Uh, I've been hiking since 2017 and this was my very first trail. So I guess it kind of has some sentimental value. Came out here with a hand-me-down backpack, hand-me-down pretty much everything. Just about froze to death. Didn't know what to bring, what to wear, you know. I think my brother-in-law helped me a little bit, not wearing jeans or anything, but I had a sleeping bag, a big Angus, one of those old synthetic ones that has the pad sleeve in it. Well, I didn't have a pad sleeve. I had this Army Green, Army CCF pad that I think weighs more than my tent now. I think it's just crazy and not comfortable at all. Might as well stay on the ground, but I guess a little bit of a thermal barrier. But woke up in the morning, had frost on my feet. And even my brother in law, he had an underquilt, zero degree underquilt and top quilt in his hammock. I just had a sleeping pad, sleeping mat, or sleeping bag in that green pad. Of course, the sun doesn't hit the canyons for like way later. So you're freezing to death and we got up and stacked up some rocks on the picnic table and made this little tiny twig fire <laughs> just to warm us up a little bit and then it was pretty funny across the field uh, you could see the sun just peeking out starting to cross the river on our side and we busted but you know a couple hundred yards from where our little campsite was to near the lodge where the sun was hit and just stood in the sun warmed up it was so nice cold like that and the sun just hits you I mean it might be like five degrees but oh man it's so much warmer <laughs> so yep this is kind of like our yearly hike come in here and just kind of start the year out it's low elevation so even though you got three feet of snow coming over the pass into this area as you can see there's very little snow down here where you're hiking to the snow 
and uh, just the dry, the dry climate down here is just beautiful. You can tell there's not a lot of moisture stays in here and gets down here. There's cactus down here, and uh, I mean, it is you know three feet of snow everywhere else, but no snow down here. So I've heard of people hiking this in June, July when the snakes are out and stuff, but I can't even imagine how hot it would be down here. Uh, sounds a little too hot, but hey, somebody took me out here. I'd hike it. That's kind of how I am. Just love that sniffing every once in a while in the nostrils. You know what are you gonna do? Uh, hop along, Cassidy. Across the stream. Whoa. Rocks. Okay. Yeah. So right here is Viking Landing. Our brother, Hippie Adam. He uh, was like June, July. And it was so hot. And it was shady right here in this spot. So he threw himself down. Big fella. So I can't do it. I'm going to camp here. Pretty funny. It's a story we tell pretty much every time we come out here. Uh, anyways, I'm going to get to hiking, cover these last couple miles, get into Kirkwood Ranch, and give you some more uh, pictures and film of that. All right, chat with you a little bit later. Whipping always through here. This little canyon breaks through those rocks right there. You come up through here, and then you hike along. Oh my gosh, the wind is whipping. A little chilly. Just wearing a t-shirt, bamboo, uh, dry fly, fly, fleet or free fly, free fly, yeah, free fly bamboo, sun shirt, covers your whole body, good, it's gonna be great, for summer even, going along, I'm gonna do some up on it, and that way, pretty much my whole body, my pants coated, and the uh, sun shirt, the amount of sunscreen I have to put on or blood repellent keeps the ticks away, make me happy. And you know, a lot of people want to hike in t shirts and or like tank tops and a bear shirt and shorts and stuff like that. But it can stay a lot cooler if you actually wear clothes. The sun isn't hitting you directly, but that's fine. Everybody does their thing. Holy shit, that's gorgeous! All right, gotta take a picture. got so much memory I guess on my camera I have to go through uh, do some editing if I have enough battery and uh, let me get rid of just some pictures that I know are already backed up on uh, other devices I make sure I can keep filming it looks like I got 55 left of this. Yeah, don't fall down there. Yeah, as you wish moment right there. Chasing Wesley down that hill. Anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you don't, sorry. It's too bad. I know, sniffing like every couple seconds, but it's better than having snot running down my face. I got nowhere to put it. So it's unnatural. All that good stuff is what you wanted. Gosh, it's beautiful. I don't know, that sun might be a little bright to capture how gorgeous this is right now. But enjoy it. I hope I'm enjoying it. It's just gorgeous. I don't know, man. I love hiking. I can't believe that it took me 
40 years or 40 to one years of my life before I really figured it out and got out here. And I wish that I was doing this since I was 20. later in life to invite me along. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just don't know. I mean, thinking about hiking and you, know, you think about camping and stuff like that, but it's just totally different. Like, this is not your average, you know, car camping. You know, drive up somewhere and get out. You know, everywhere, everywhere you go and everything you see, you know, you work for it. And there's just something about it. Like, obviously you have to do it to understand, but if you're a hiker, you can know. You know, your butt gets kicked, you freeze to death. I mean, obviously not to death, because then you wouldn't hike again. But anyways, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, you're beat up, got blisters, you know, you've done hundreds of miles, you know, on a long trip, weekend trip, you don't get that beat up. But still, you know, you're like, still out here, you're cold, you're wet, you're stinky. And it's just like, I don't know what it is. Like, you just, you're already thinking about the next hike on the way back to the car. I mean, you could be half, half a life. I mean, they could probably be bringing helicopters in and hauling you out with a broken leg and in your brain you'd be planning like, oh man, you know, how long is it gonna take me to get out of this cast? I gotta get back out there. And the more time you spend in town and you know, all you do is just think about backpacking, think about gear. You know, you got a tent, you, so you're still, you're shopping for more tents. You got your quilt, you're shopping for a quilt. It doesn't matter, you got a backpack, you're out there shopping for a backpack. And I mean, I think sometimes, you know, you're trying to lighten everything up when you have like the ultralight mindset of just, you know, as minimal, minimal as best, just for the better hiking experience, you know, you just cover miles, you don't have to carry all that stuff and you can really just enjoy it. Interesting turd. All right, but you know, you're just looking for more stuff to buy. It's just ridiculous. You're surfing on Amazon, you're checking out, you know, Waymark and Gossamer Gear and Light AF and, you know, I mean, just KS Ultralight. You're just checking out all these packs and you're just thinking about, hmm, you know, it's 200 bucks, 300 bucks. You know, you're in Z Packs checking out the tents. You're like, I don't know, man, a Z a duplex is too mainstream for me, but you're still just like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes there's a reason things are mainstream. And I think I was like with Darn Tough. I was a little against Darn Tough socks. They just, I don't know, it just seemed like they really weren't worth that $20 a pair. And I still question it, but I mean, I got some Smart Wool socks they got for Christmas and those things are so darn comfortable. And I mean, I have those and I mean, they're a little super low top. So I'll use those this summer, but my go-to socks are just been these, these real tree socks. I don't know. They've never done me wrong. I mean, uh, my Topo Terra Ventures that I wore last year did really good. I only got like a couple little hot spots here and there, but since I switched these temps, I just got so much room for activities in these. I mean, my toes just like, they like to spread out. And I mean, they're not like on top of each other, just squished together. I mean, I don't know, I'm just a big flip-flop person my whole life. I've always wore flip-flops through the whole summer. And no, not with socks. If you're wearing socks and flip-flops, you need to get your brain checked. That's just terrible. But uh, I just wear flip-flops so my toes and feet, four feet just are open. And that's just, you know, how my feet have developed. So the altar is another thing, you know, it's like so mainstream. So sometimes you think like, is it mainstream just because it's a brand and it's expensive and you gotta have it? I mean, I just grew up with, you know, I was a Valley Village kid and I never grew up with a lot and everything I had, I had to work for. So I see the rich kids coming to school, Nikes and brand new, whatever all the time. And I guess you just get to where you don't wanna wear that stuff. Cause I mean, sometimes their attitudes go along with it. You don't want to have that elitist attitude and you kind of want to make your own path. You know, you want to make do with less. I mean, really, isn't that what backpacking's all about anyways? So anyways, rambling on. Let's get some hiking in. I'm almost there. Take some pictures of the overlook into uh, Kirkwood Ranch here in a minute.
this is down here at the lodge. They got a water bathroom they turn off during the cold months, which I feel like they should just have a hole because then people wouldn't be burying poop. They could actually just go in a real outhouse. There's our camp over there. The wind is definitely whipping every once in a while through here. Uh, and it was a cold, cold hike. <clears throat> cold hike. I got all my layers on. I got my rain jacket over my apex. Uh, and then my uh, bamboo shirt under that. I still got my thermals to put on for a little extra layer of warmth. And those thermals are pretty awesome. Those Patagonia, Patagucci, uh, Capilines. <clears throat> pretty amazed how much warmth those things have. But obviously the wind goes right through them. They're not going to be on the outside of your body. But an under layer, they work awesome. <clears throat> so I'm going to come up here and... Uh, look at the little museum sign the book that we sign every year see if the locals are out and about they're probably not so they usually have a fire pan we can use for the fire <clears throat> so we don't have to try to hike one in which is nice because carrying an extra metal fire pan isn't exactly fine but here we go I'll show you some footage area there's a little water wheel I think they have that one and another one that they feed the 12 volt system <clears throat> pretty cool and there's the the ranch Pretty nice. Oh, and then they have <clears throat> this is a little museum up here. Very fun. Sterling Cabin. We made it! <laughs> this is the second trip with this 3FUL single person single skin trekking pole tent. I got her staked out into the wind. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not the warmest thing in the world being single skin, but you can get it pretty well pitched. And so far we got a pretty decent amount of wind and it hasn't had any trouble so far. So using uh, mini groundhogs on all the main tie outs and the main body I'm using uh, shepherd's hooks and titanium shepherd's hooks they seem to be doing their job if you can get them all the way down they can't turn out so they work pretty good yeah I replaced all the I mean this thing had a weird little tie system and it doesn't seem to need it Seems if you just tie it to that main vent, pull that out, works pretty good. I got the extra string still, but. <sighs> got our little fire going. Got some crazy people packing in three person tents over here and uh, two person tents. They, got, they need all the space for activities like this guy right here, Adam. He's just a bit crazy. Call him Adam 50. Because he started out with a 50 pound pack. He's probably down to a 30 pound pack now. <laughs> a little bit less every time. Oh, did you bring your 100? Got some uh, crazy hammockers. Look how easy they are setting up those hammocks. I mean, it's like hammocks are the way to go, right? So easy to set up. Never have a trouble. 
I mean, they probably wouldn't have any trouble here. I mean, if there wasn't apple trees that somebody planted, I'm sure there's lots of places to hang. Yeah. You gotta do the hammock. Got Michael chilling. Look at all the beer he brought. One at a time. One at a time. Rainier. We're not hiking Rainier right They're now, good for but your soul. good for your soul. That's true. <sighs> Diaz over here. Steven Diaz. He has his uh, got this um, outdoor vitals. It's basically like a whole pod that zips up around you. That is sweet. Under quilt, top quilt, all in one. He's hoping not to get blown into the river tonight. <laughs> I've camped. In the, I've I've hung in this same spot with the same type of wind, so I survived. But make sure when you get out to pee that you know that's a steep hill. Oh, dude! <laughs> yeah. Exit left. Yeah. I tried to lean out and pee out of there a lot that one year, and it just wasn't working out. Steven, he's got his up over here. Our friend uh, Kyle, we call him Wild Kyle or Hiker Jesus, because he saved us all. He's got his like Taj Mahal. It's like the biggest tarp I've ever seen in my entire life. This thing's super light too. Hummingbird. Look at all this space in here. What the heck? We call him the brother-in-law. His name is Steven, but we call him the brother-in-law. Funny story behind that one. Oh man! Who got that fire going? Somebody knew what they were doing. Where's your fire kit, Steven? I did my pack loadout video and Steven. He did use part of his fire kit to get that going though. <laughs> well, I wasn't here, so you I didn't witness it. I won't edit it out. I didn't need no fire kit. It did definitely didn't need a fire kit. You didn't start the fire. Who didn't? I started the fire. You started it and then it died. Well, it's because nobody was around to help. I had to go get firewood. Yeah, anyways. They made fun of me for not having a fire kit. I was like, I got a lighter. I got it going with the lighter, but then nobody else is helping. So then I guess somebody threw some flammable liquid in there. I don't know what they did. While I went and got firewood from way the crap over there. Yeah, lots of help. Anyways, talk to you later. Raise it to a lip. And just before she drank it, she said... Waking up in the morning. <laughs> Supposed to have snow last night. Don't think we had any. I know we had a little bit. There's my yard sale. Making coffee. Some cowboy style, like Turkish style coffee, basically, is how I do it. Works out pretty good. My, uh, uh, my zero degree... Zero degree quilt worked awesome, my outdoor vitals, and my Aegis Max down booties actually started to feel kind of hot in it off and on, down to probably close to zero at times. Then it seemed like it warmed up a little bit, but it seems pretty cold out there right now. My, it was hard to get warm, but once I got warm, I actually got pretty warm. And then the wind is just whipping. It's another thing, this 3F tent, this trekking pole tent, I got it staked down with four mini groundhogs and I think six uh, titanium shepherd's hooks. And uh, I was a little worried last night, obviously, you know. I'm not sure if it's going to blow itself and try to get away from me. I mean, I'm laying on 90% of it. I did have a dream last night that... <laughs> that the tent actually the bottom ripped out and blew away and then I was just laying on the bottom and the rest of the tent was gone which would be pretty crazy but that was just a dream <laughs> it's always hard to sleep when you got wind blowing that hard out there anyways I'm gonna let my phone charge up a little bit here drink my coffee go get some water filter it down by the creek and uh, get ready for some day hikes today I'll see you in a little while even how was your sleep last night? Awesome. I wonder if this is filming upside down. 
I don't know. It's a tree. How about you? How about my? How are you, Michael? I did okay. You did with your baklava. With my baklava. Were you chewing on it last night? Your, yes. Your baklava. Well, it's, it's my comfort blanket. Your comfort blanket. It looks like a ninja. How about you, Adam? Baklava, you did though. good. Pretty nice and warm last night. How about you? Midnight. Did you do good last night? Did you snuggle your boy? Huh? Hope he didn't get the peanut butter out again last night. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's all smiling. <laughs> I'm just like, Brian's so sick in the head. Well, we know that. Well, the 3FUL did really good in the 700 mile an hour windstorms. He was talking about making his little uh, insulator for his V3, and I said, I thought you were just going to use it for a buff plug. <laughs> <laughs> that, would keep the, that would keep the V3 warm, just right in the butt. All right, well, we're heading that direction. Around the bend to uh, Suicide Point or what's it called? Romeo and Juliet Point? Yeah, Lover's Leap. Lover's Leap, that's what it's called. Steven knows everything. He's the brother in law. He knows. He knows things. <laughs> All right, here we are walking along towards uh, Suicide Point and then uh, beyond. I think there's uh, mines up here we might explore a little bit and uh, old landing strip and who knows. Uh, we were thinking about trying to go to the dam, but that's probably 30 miles away, so probably not going to hit that today. Doesn't sound like a fun day trip. But, uh, it's got Adam and Midnight, and we got Steven and Steven and Michael back there. It's a hike, nice, beautiful day, hike along the river. Nope, not everything. <clears throat> Just this little canyon walk along here. It's pretty fun to film. I don't know if it's going to come out in the video, but if you can see over there, there's a whole herd of elk kind of making their way up that ravine it looks like can't really get a picture I don't have a zoom lens but it's pretty cool to see it's making their way up there it's like a snake All right, looks like I was wrong earlier. I was thinking that was Suicide Point back behind us. I think this is it, according to the map. The U.S. Topo something. So how are you guys doing? How's Great. the day hike? Good Perfect. Hike. Nice. There it is. There it is. Hi, goes up to the point. Let's do it. Look up there. Oh. See him up there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right at the very top. Weird. Steven, you see those guys up there? Man, they're being up there quick, didn't they? Must be a different herd, because I doubt they... Oh, that's a lot. That's a big herd. There's no way they can get there. Well, they could get there that way. Well, I don't know why they're coming back down. They're still up there. There's one solo up there in the middle there, you see him? Talk yep, the he's like the king. Cool. He's the king. You told us to take a left. We need to take a right. Yeah. I'm you, Simba. You never check for directions. Stunning views. Holy moly. Well, it looks like break time. Can't ask for a better place to take a break. No doubt. Got all the guys sitting around. <laughs> sitting up here, close to wherever they jumped off, apparently. Yeah. 
Lover's Leap, Suicide Point, whatever. Yeah. Just gorgeous up here. The sun came out. It's supposed to be That's snowy beautiful. all day. So sun comes up, comes out and warms it up, and then if it all clouds up again tonight, that'll be nice and warm. Definitely you can see the snowpack up high. Yeah, high you didn't don't do it! One. Don't do it! <laughs> <laughs> You have so much to live for, Stephen. <laughs> it's amazing the contrast of a... all that up there. Beautiful yeah. sounds. Well, we hiked up out of the main little canyon to get to Duncan Mines. We found a couple of entrances. There's a little bit smaller one down below this. They don't look fun to really climb into, but we might do a little exploration, a little spelunking. Whew. Climbing up off the floor down there. We didn't see there's another trail we had to hike over to. It would have been a little bit easier path, but we kind of just hiked up the ravine. And now we're up here. This looks like there's a whole settlement across from us. Look over there. Even a dock. House. A really long outbuilding. Interesting to see what's over there. Somebody's private property or something. But that's interesting. Oregon over there, across from where we are. Really beautiful scenery of the mountains. It'll get to it. Oh, there we go. Sun shining on a couple of the little tops up there. Pretty low elevation down here, but anyways, hope you can see me. <laughs> ah, looking forward to getting back. We gotta still explore up out of Kirkwood Ranch. There's an old moonshine cabin that's called the Mansion. Huge building, and like when you find like see the sign and see what year it was built. <sighs> it's just giant. Anyways. I'll be taking some pictures of that later and show you. All right, signing off for now. Old, <clears throat> some super old farm equipment here. Let's check it out. It's pretty cool. John Deere. John Deere number four. That's pretty cool. It's like he sat right there and there was a seat. Till up your land. Work it. Well, let's check out this old cabin. Sam's cabin, it says. Looks like people have used it. Looks like definitely the mice have been in here. 
running around. I got water hanging. So, just gonna clean this out. It'd be sort of a shelter. I wouldn't want to stay in here. It's a lot of rat poop. Somebody's can of fuel. Not nothing in there. Can of Progresso. People burning trash. And the old potbelly stove. I guess it's not really a potbelly. Just an old stove. It's pretty cool though. The old fire wood wood um, fire her uh, wood cook stove. When I was a kid, grew up in a cabin similar to this, maybe a little bigger. Mine was made out of logs, but we had a, a wood cook stove like that. My mom cooked on every day. Pretty cool. I wonder if anybody else is going to make it down here. Well, climbed up to uh, back up here. You can see the airport back there in the distance. It's busting my butt. Trying to catch up. I know Adam was right in front of me. Whew. But it's a lot of elevation gain in this little chunk here. Once I get over past uh, Suicide Point, should be able to uh, catch everybody maybe. This depends on how much energy I have. I always hike fasted, so sometimes you get a little down on energy because your body it takes longer to metabolize your body fat for energy than it does like a Snickers bar or something. Anyways, I'll just keep trucking along. Just taking a break. Yeah, definitely looking forward to some nummy chili tonight that I made yesterday. It's so good. Oh God, craving it. And I got a couple protein bars. I'm gonna down when I get back. It's gonna be good. All right, see ya in a little while. Well, we made it back. From the airstrip. All of our gear's still here. All our gear is still here. That's a plus. I'm eating this protein bar and it hurts right here. So hard it's because the rules beer before protein. <clears throat> I do have a beer though, and this is good. I pushed it, huffed it back. I caught everybody. It's because I'm awesome, you know. <laughs> caught this guy, he's like 20 years younger than me. This guy right here could probably pace me though. Oh, Steven Diaz. He puts in the, he puts in the pace. I know Steven and Adam are back there somewhere. We'll be here in time to pack up and leave tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Steven is, just has a nice steady pace. Winding down this day. Got the campfire going. I think we did 10 miles hike. Something. I did 10 miles, everybody else was out. They didn't go to the airport. I thought it was more like 30 miles. <laughs> right, guys? Oh. Yeah, it was 35. Yeah. Yeah. It is not 36, warm, yeah. though, out here. So uh, <laughs> Adam's retreated to his tent already. I think he's stretching out his back. The 26 year old isn't feeling anything because he's fucking 26. Or freaking, he's freaking yeah. 26. Yeah, I think we can hike in, drink, and then hike back out again. See that? He has. Just here by the fire now. Just chilling until bedtime. Then we gotta hike out tomorrow. I think we're gonna go see that, uh, see the cabin up, up behind us. Somewhere up that little area, about a mile, and there's a moonshine cabin mansion. Yeah, it's a shortcut. Follow me.
going to conclude the last night. Everybody's getting tucked in and getting snuggled up. I'll probably uh, watch a movie or something and get all cuddled up and warm. It doesn't seem like the wind is going to be blowing as hard as it was last night. It had like at least 40 mile an hour winds up here. Or down here, I guess. We're like pretty low along the river in the canyon. But my tan didn't blow away, so that's good. But sat around the fire for a while and got nice and toasty warm. And now I'm snuggling in. Got my thermal sleep clothes on, my hat on, and my uh, zero degree outdoor vitals. Got it. This thing, I was worried last night. It didn't seem like it was going to be warm, but my butt was just so cold that it took a long time for it to warm up. But once it did, I was actually really toasty all night. And the reflectics underneath my my uh, thermo rest because I just this one's like 3.2 R value and so it does pretty good but then I have a sheet of reflectic material I think that I showed in one of my gear videos that I did show in my only gear video that I have <laughs> so it seemed to make a huge difference I could definitely feel the heat retention well anyways I'll sign off for now and uh, take some pictures and video tomorrow when we wake up and get hiking out of here Gonna stop in uh, Grangeville for uh, some breakfast. Uh, breakfast slash lunch is usually what time it is in Grangeville when we get there. So I'll uh, talk to you then. Bye. It poured down rain last night on us all night. Now it's uh, big flakes of snow. <clears throat> Not a lot of wind, so the tent got some condensation on the inside. What wasn't what a whole lot. Oh, I'm just videotaping. Oh. So I got up and made myself some coffee, packing up on the inside here as much as I can before I have to get out in the weather and uh, pack this stuff up. Should be able to uh, just smash my tin on the outside of my uh, my backpack so it doesn't get any of this water on the inside. And then uh, hike out and go get some breakfast or some lunch or whatever time it is. I'll just call it what it is. But right now I'm going to enjoy my coffee uh, before I have to brave the weather to go uh Go pee. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> talk to you later. Snowy wonderland compared to coming in here the other day. Just too beautiful, even with this. Even with cold hands, cold feet. Along the cliff's edge. There's my feet walking. A little snowy. And my trail runners. That's alright. And really working on my breathing technique. So I'm a, way too much of a mouth breather, especially when things got strenuous. In doing that, you breathe in a lot of more dry air, and then your lungs constrict, and then you have like basically exercise induced asthma feelings. But can focus on only nose breathing and just make yourself breathe a lot more so then you're not trying to catch back up with your mouth or if I really feel like I'm huffing I'll put my my buff or my uh, little built-in balclava um, it's on my hat over my mouth and that way it keeps the air more moist, which helps. But that's just me. So let's see what works for you. Yeah. Definitely nice to get going when you're in a morning like this, and you wake up pretty, pretty chilled outside. It's always hard to get out of that nice warm cocoon. And 
you got a good sleep system. Mine is actually a little too warm for this. I thought at first that the zero degree wasn't going to cut it, but that thing is super warm. I think the hard part was the first night I went to bed and my butt was just an ice, just ice. It was so cold. So putting that inside my sleeping bag made everything cold. And so I just had to keep kind of alligator rolling around until it finally thawed out. And then it was just hot in there. And you know, every once in a while you gotta vent it or crack a seam. I mean, that's probably only down into the low 20s this time around. Definitely warmer than the Wanaha that I was on with my 30, 30 degree. The 30 degree probably would work for this trip. First night was pretty cold with the wind, but last night was just, I mean, it kind of overcast and started raining, which is always going to be warmer. And then it started snowing, which, oh, way better to hike in this than it would be to rain, in rain. We all know that. Man, look at that. All right, I got to stop filming so I can take a picture. Well, just about there. It's definitely been wet. My shoes are soaked, my pants are soaked. But, keep hiking and stay warm. And then there will be a nice warm vehicle waiting for me. Since I got the keys. I guess somebody said, a lady, the caretaker, at Kirkwood Ranch said that um, somebody had let their cows loose That's why this trail is a little beat up in some places all that cow weight in a herd grazing along the canyon definitely does damage make some of these little spots kind of feel treacherous on a trail that you know already is fairly treacherous it's the fact that you're on a cliff's edge I mean Oh, biggie, just watch your step. Whew. So, pretty stoked with uh, all the gear I was able to test out for this trip. The Reflectix definitely made a huge difference from ground convection for my normal pad, and I don't have to bring that all the time. And I do have a lighter pad for summer use when you know you can dangle off the pad and on the ground and doesn't doesn't really create that much cold transfer. Sometimes it's nice on a hot summer night. It depends on where you're at. But I must say, this wide pad that I got from X from Thermarest is really comfortable helps these aging bones rest at night, especially after, you know, knocking out miles, doing a lot of exploring up hills and stuff. It's definitely feeling it in my legs this trip, but this beginning of the year, kind of got to knock all the rest off. See, this is part of that treacherousness. Very thin area to walk, and it's on snow. Of course, you probably could recover before you fell off the cliff, right? <sighs> it's definitely a beautiful view. I'll try to slow it down so your brain can take it all in. And I got to try to clip all this together because I've never done that before. How do I open this fucking thing? <laughs> open the bottom one first, push it all the way out, and then the other one this up. So, I made it back to the Jeep. My hair still has 
chilling it. <laughs> I had one of those fun moments where you wake up and you chug your coffee and you take off hiking. And you know you're going to have to find some place to drop some trout. I only got six miles to the trail and so you just hike your butt off. <laughs> so, we're done now. We were heading might be heading into Reagan's little fishing town on the Salmon River and uh, get some world famous prime rib sandwich that Steven always tells me about but I for some reason always miss out on. Like literally one time we went through there to try to get one and the power was out so they could get one and then I can't remember. There's always some reason so hopefully it works out today. So I wait on everybody else. Here we go. I'm thawing out my legs that are frozen right now. I did have a set of thermals in here that I just put on a shirt. I might take off my pants real quick too. To get naked since Michael loves that kind of thing. Wait, you got your pants off? Almost. Huh. On a scale of one out of ten, how wet are your feet? <laughs> like a thousand. <laughs> my, Eleven. My waterproof shoes made like maybe like two miles. Yeah, that's that's what. just so There's no point in waterproof shoes. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think I think they do, but anyways, I'll talk to you guys later.